Hello, Luke. Um, I, was, I had a question regarding the uh, the Dano line. Um, I was, where where would you put the offensive expectations for their line at this point, considering they've been doing such a good job at, at shutting down the 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 stone line? So, where do you? What are your expectations on the offensive side of the puck? And are these expectations changing depending on when you play on the road or at home? Yeah, no, I think the expectations are, are, are how they're playing right now. They're Like you said, they're, they're really doing a great job defensively. We're uh, really uh, count on them in that department. They're, they're really doing a great job. Uh, uh, as you can see with the scores of every game uh, and the scoring chances, they're doing a great job there and they're creating, uh, you know, Gal Galley, I think had his better game of the series there last night. He had some good chances, almost broke free a couple times and some shots on the net. And, you know, he's always going to be around that crease. And, uh, you know, they had a couple good scoring chances off the rush. I know one in the second period where Lekkonen made a great uh, play through the neutral zone and uh, we got pucks to the net again. And, 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 you know, obviously that line goes to the net hard and we'll stop at the crease, hopefully looking for rebounds. So, you know, the, I think the expectations are, uh, you know, you don't, in, by, for any line, but especially them is uh, you don't get scored against, you don't give up scoring chances. And when you have a chance to create, we're going to try and uh, put those home. Dan Robertson. Hi, Luke. Uh, I guess more about expectations. I wanted to ask you about the, the third pairing. I thought John Merrill played pretty well last night. And when you look at him and Gustafson in, in the last couple of games and overall, what are you hoping for from, from a third pairing like that? Well, uh, you know, as you can see, we rotate uh, guys around, so they don't play together a lot. Uh, it's just we have our top four going quite a bit. But, um, you know, as, as third pairing guys, they've really added, uh, you know, to our – our depth on defense, you know, John Merrill's a scrappy guy, real smart little plays and physical out there. Um, you know, so he's really good in D zone faceoffs and, and Gus has been really, really good, very confident, moves the puck. Well, a uh, good addition to the power play, very uh, poised there. And, uh, you know, as you see, you know, he's got some, uh, points on the board, which, uh, helps from the back end in the playoffs. So, uh, you know, we're really happy with how, how they're playing. Uh, you know, some nights we'd like to get them more ice time, but uh, when the other, when they're tight games and the other teams kind of roll in their top two lines, uh, you know, we like to have our big guys out there and it kind of cuts into their time, but uh, overall they've been great. Arpon Basu. Hey Luke, I just wanted to pick up on that actually. Um, you know, I think we can all see how Gustafson's primary I don't want to say primary, but one of the big reasons why he's in the lineup is how he can help the power play. And, and he's been good in that regard. I think he's been on the ice for, for the majority of your power play goals since he's come in. When you're not getting that many power plays, does that weigh into the decision to, to even dress him or, or, or how he's used? Or how, how, does that, how does that impact the decision-making process considering how few power plays there are at this time of year generally? Yeah, I think earlier in the playoffs that, that – that aspect with him helping on the power plays helped him get into the lineup. Uh, but the way he's played has kept him in the lineup. He, he's definitely uh, very good positionally, good stick on puck. Uh, he's never seemed to be in too much trouble or any trouble at all. So uh, that's uh, it, when you have a guy that really doesn't give up anything defensively and can add on the offense uh, at an ozone face off or the power play, that's just going to be a plus plus for him and us. So uh, really no, uh, no doubts in our mind uh, of him really uh, staying in there or not. He's, he's part of the six right now. Alexis Belanger champagne Merci. Hi, Luke. Um, I think it was after game two against the Maple Leafs, there was some talks about uh, how the team didn't necessarily handle well the way the, the referees were calling the game. And, uh, you know, you guys talk a lot about facing adversity and adapting. How, how do you feel the group has reacted to the way the referees have called the game over the last two games? Uh, very good. I think uh, as the playoffs have gone along, um, you know, it's high intense and motions are high. So, you know, there, it's natural for human beings to get, uh, uh, you know, the uh, both us and maybe the officials uh, that, the uh, you know, it, the pressure builds out there and, and there's emotion. So, I think we've done a good job of addressing it with our players and our players reacting the right way. We have guys like uh, Webby and uh, our captains, but especially uh, Corey Perry with, uh, you know, his communication with the referees at the right times and, and uh, the right conversations has been great. 
And, uh, you know, last night, I think our, our bench was really cool. I didn't see any eruptions or any reactions to anything other than what we can control. And that's, that's our message to them. And they've done a great job. We want them to put all their energy and effort into their play, not any other distractions that we can't control. Stu Cowan. Luke, you've been around the NHL a long time. Back in your playing days, did you ever imagine there would be a hockey team in Las Vegas? And just your thoughts on the environment, what it's like there now going there as a visiting team? Yeah, no, the league's gone, come a long way since I started. But, uh, you know, it, it's exciting that the you know expansion has kind of touched all four corners of North America. And and it's great for the game. It's, it's good for... Um, us to go into an environment like that uh you'd rather go into an environment like that which is very exciting loud uh you know a great entertaining building and it's fun to play and it's kind of like going to madison square gardens and or when people come here to montreal to play in the bell center it's just the best atmosphere you'd rather that uh, especially this time of the year than going into a place that's not uh, a typical hockey market and understands the game or is excited about it but uh you know i think the the success that Las Vegas has had right from day one uh, has really helped their, uh, you know, core fan base uh, learn the game quick and enjoy their success and, and really build uh, a lot of energy in that building. So it's something that I think at this time of the year we can feed off as well. Steven Wino. Hi, Luke. I understand this might be difficult kind of in the middle of a playoff series, but can you reflect at all on kind of everything your career as a player, as a coach has kind of prepared you for this moment? Yeah, I think, um, you know, experience always helps. Uh, that's, you know, that's why you really count on those uh, experienced players, obviously like Carey Price and in, in to the backstop us, but, you know, Weber and uh, and Corey Perry and Stahl up front, uh, you know, all the older guys that have been around. Um, you know, myself, I've, I've been through pretty much every scenario uh, other than probably getting to the finals in the Stanley Cup in, in this league. So, uh you know, I think, uh, you know, coaching in the minors helps, uh, you know, I had four years there of running a bench. And I think that for me has really given me a lot of uh, help. And then, you know, obviously Sean Burke uh, having me over for the Spangler Cup as a head coach as well. Uh, all those experiences, you, you boil them together and, uh, you know, it, it gives you, um, you know, insight on different uh, parts of the game, preparation for the game after a game like last night, how to feel and how to react and um, and talk to the players. So, you know, I mean, I'm very fortunate that I had a, a long career playing and very fortunate to get into coaching right away and have uh, lots of great mentors along the way that were, were helpful for me to grow as a coach and learn. So I'd be ready for this uh, experience. We'll take two more for coach to finish. Simon Olivier Larange. Bonjour, Luke. Uh, yesterday, yesterday night, after the, the, the Knights made it 1 1, we felt that your team was a little less dynamic, maybe more static, and they had a harder time to get scoring chances. How, how big of a challenge is it to keep the same mindset and the same type of play when you're when the score is even the, um, compared to when you're trailing or when you're leading? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, we had some chances to make it 2 nothing, And unfortunately, we didn't capitalize on those. And, uh, you know, they, they got one that just squeaked in. I don't think Kerry saw it, uh, you know, and it just got in the back door. And, uh, you know, it's always... Uh, a challenge to keep those emotions and, and your energy going in, in the upward level. I thought we had a great game from start to finish. Uh, there's probably times where we carried the play a lot more in the first half of the game than the second half of the game. But overall, like I think it was about 10 scoring chances uh, for each team. And, uh, you know, I think we probably had the better of them and, and, and we're happy with our play. We're really confident with our play and we're uh, just confident moving forward. So I don't think, you know, us being ahead or behind is going to matter much. We're, we're into this series, uh, you know, you know, we jumped right into this series. We're right in right now, ready to go. So uh, I think what we're looking for is the same type of start and to kind of keep that consistency all the way through to the end. We'll take the last question. Eric Engels. Hey, Luke, I had some connection problems. So sorry if you answered this already, but what can the Gallagher line do to break through a little more offensively, considering they're doing such a good job defensively? Yeah, uh, you know, a lot of the same. I, I mentioned earlier uh, that you missed that. I think 
you know, Brendan had one of his best games yet. He had some good chances. Uh, uh, you know, he's always going to be around that crease. So it's a matter of time where a puck and a rebound's loose there because, you know, he's whacking that home. So, uh, you know, I, I think they, they've created some speed through the neutral zone much better last game and had some chances off the rush. You know, uh, Robin Leonard, give him credit. There wasn't a lot of rebounds, especially the second half of the game that spit out there. So that's what we got to create. Uh, but we rely on them so much in so many different situations, like you said, especially defensively. And they did a great job in that end of periods, um, you know, start of periods to give us energy and the end of periods to make sure that the, the other team doesn't create anything. So if, if they can inch their game uh, along forward offensively, that's great. And I think it's a matter of time before a guy like Galley scores one or two for us. And uh, the other guys are, they're going to be dependable and uh, they can create as well. So we're, we're confident and uh, we're very lucky to have them. So we're just ready for that breakthrough uh, next game. Thanks for your time, coach. Thank you.